Welcome to the Boxing Bookie. This is 3D Boxing. Uh, we're going to have a fun show for you today. We're going to get into the Joe Smith versus Zordo Ramirez fight. It's a really good fight, really intriguing fight. I think it's the last fight we're going to do. I'm going to be out of town in Houston covering some um, boxing in, in Houston, Texas. Uh, it's a great segue. Uh, before we get into that, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Uh, um, the Boxing Bookie comes at you every single show, every single fight uh, to break down and show you how to bring down the house. We don't gamble. I use DraftKings. You can't even use DraftKings in Texas. I just want to show you how bookies don't know anything and you can bring down you can bring down the house and you can make a consistent income on boxing gambling. All right. Now, I want to also ask you to please subscribe to the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That is Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds go to autism research and recovery. Uh, I want to get into um, today's show. Um, I want to get into Joe Smith Jr. and Zoto Ramirez because I've changed my mind. I've had a change of heart on this fight. This is a really, really fun fight. You got two big guys coming up from light heavyweight, two former world champions, a two division world champ, I believe, in Zoto Ramirez. If you get about 75, it doesn't matter. Um, but this is a really, really good fight. And I, I've gone back and I watched a bunch of their fights, and I've actually changed their, changed my mind on this fight. Um, I still think over under ten and a half. We got to go under ten and a half. This is a slug fest. This is a you know an explosion waiting to happen. Um, both guys can hit. Both guys look for the knockout. Um, both guys are there to be hit. Um, so I'm going to start with Joe Smith Jr., who I originally was going to pick to win this, and, and I've, I've changed my mind on this. Big guy, strong guy, six foot tall, uh, seventy six inch reach. His last four fights have averaged eight rounds. He's, they've all been twelve rounders. Zora Ramirez's last twelve, uh, four, four, five fights have all been eight round, uh, twelve rounders, and he's also averaged eight rounds. So each guy in their last four or five, twelve round fights have all averaged. Eight rounds. The over-under is 10 and a half. Why are you taking over 10 and a half? That's a home run to me. Okay? Take the under. Joe Smith Jr., I, I think, has not looked impressive in his last couple of fights. Um, he has not really looked impressive going all the way back to uh, Eladier Alvarez back in the bubble in Las Vegas in the summer of 2020. It's the last time I thought he looked impressive. It's three years ago. Okay, he then fought Maxim Vlasov in 2021. He needed to rally late to get a decision. A lot of people don't think he deserved. Um, then he fought uh, Steve Gefford, which he looked like trash in that fight. Right. Uh, and then he fought Arta Betterbeev and got destroyed. So, look, Joe Smith Jr. is not a young kid anymore. This is not him fighting Bernard Hopkins. I believe he's 33 years old. Um, I, he's slow to start with. He's got slow white guy problems to start with, right? Like, um, he doesn't move his head. He's, he's there to be hit. What he is is big and strong. He's got decent fundamentals. He's got a long jab that he uses, and he's got tremendous power. If he hits you, he hurts you, okay? Um, he doesn't go to the body enough. You can push him backwards, and he's willing to fight your fight. Um, he's going to be in line to get hit with the straight left uh, from the Southport uh, Zordo Ramirez all night long. Um, he puts himself in danger over and over again. Like I said, he doesn't move his head, and he stands in front of you. He just stands in front of you, and he plots. He's flat-footed, obviously, because he wants to sit down on his power. Um, but he doesn't go downstairs. He doesn't make any investments, right? Like, he's basically jab, jab, right hand. Uh, he uses his distance. While he's not good on the inside, um, so, basically, he has to have the fight from the long range, and he has to be able to score with his right hand. He's got decent angles and decent footwork for someone who's not hyper-athletic. Um, he can pivot out of things a little bit, you know, um, but mostly he's, he's a puncher. He's, he's, he's a big, strong puncher, right? Um, it has flaws defensively and athletically. Um, Zoro Ramirez is a similar fighter. So Ramirez also likes to use his range. He uses his jab. He's defensively floored. He gets hit a lot. Um, he's going to be in line for Joe Smith's right hand. So this is going to be combustion. 
right? Someone is going to get knocked out. So I absolutely love the under on this. You know, both guys can hit. Both guys get hit. Both guys get hit with big shots. Both guys land big shots. Both guys are looking to land big shots. Both guys are defensively flawed. We're not, I, I can't see this thing going distance or going into, you know, late into the 11th. Um, you know, Azuna's also a better counter puncher. He does things better. He's a much better athlete. He moves better. Um, but again, he, he's not a real good defensive fighter. He stands there. He likes to block punches with his face, too. Um, He's got a good chin. You know, I'm not really sure if Joe Smith Jr. has a good chin. What punchers besides better be has he really fought? Who has he stood up to? You know, a lot of times guys like Joe Smith, when they're looking to land something big, they leave themselves wide open when they miss with a right hand or a power shot, right? Um, Zordo does too. So we, we like that. Um, you know, he's also a better body puncher. My only issue with Zoto Ramirez is he doesn't go to the body enough. It's not something that he looks to do. Um, all that being said, you know, he's more athletic. I think there's a better chance he can he can get himself into better positions to land his power shots and really tee off. And like I said, Joe Smith Jr., you can make him go backwards. Get Gaffard, Gafford, whatever his name is, made him go backwards at times. Like it, it, He's willing to fight your fight. And I think, you know, all that being said, I'm going to pick uh, – Zola Ramirez by uh, KO. I don't love those odds, so here's what we're going to do to make money on this fight, which is a really, really intriguing fight. To make money on. All right. The odds for Gilberto Ramirez are a little bigger than I like. Uh, a $100 bet makes you just $29.41. Okay, we're not making a ton of money on that, but that's what's going to happen. Gilberto Ramirez is going to win the fight. A pretty good fight to make money. A, a pretty good bet to make money on is the under 10 and a half. I'd make that a two-time bet. I can't see this thing going the distance. That's paying minus 115. So you got to bet 100 to win 115. So I would make that a two-times bet, right? So a $200 bet on that would make you 173.91. It's Paying pretty close to even, right? 173.91. Just to show you what that would look like, $100 bet would pay you $87. We're going to make that times two because this is the bet we want to take. You could add this. Gilberto Ramirez by KO, TKO, or DQ will pay you almost even money. It's a pretty good bet. I think that's likely to happen. I don't love those odds, um, but you can make that bet if you want to. If you wanted to do this, Joe Smith Jr. by knockout, it's really going to pay a lot of money. It's going to pay $750, but you'd lose all these other bets. I would leave this out, and I would simply take the um, – the money line on Gilberto Ramirez, pay you 140. I'm sorry, pay you 130. And then a over 10 and a half rounds, which I think is, is, is a great bet. Uh, bet that times two to go over. What did I do here? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, under two and a half. I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. Under two and a half. Wow, guys, I, I am losing my brain here we're gonna make it a two times bet to go under 10 and a half rounds we're not gonna get halfway through the 11th okay wow i am sorry guys uh so those are your best under two and a half under 10 and a half rounds and uh gilberto ramirez on the money line here's your bet so basically there let me get this up for you again guys my brain's not working. So we'd make three, two, 173, and 29. So on a three, uh, 300 bet, we'd be getting a little over $100. Again, not making a ton of money on this, but this is how we're going to make money. If you make these bets consistently, Gilberto Ramirez is going to win the fight. It's going to go under 10 rounds. So this is how we can make some money on this fight. All right. Um, I, I think that's the best bet right there is under 10 and a half. I love the under on this fight. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Uh, please follow me on all forms of social media. Uh, 
boxing bookie shows you how to bring down the house on every big fight. Uh, we've got uh, other videos for this weekend too, where we can really make some good money this weekend. Uh, it is October 5th, 2023 from Texas to the world. Thank you. And God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.